Welcome back to Market on Close. Let's talk some tech, especially last night's reports. Chris Sankar joins us from TD Callen, Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst covering Dell, HPQ, Apple, and many more. Chris, thanks for being here. Uh, what was the highlight of the week that, of course, had NVIDIA kind of as the poster child, but it seems like some stuff in your category might have uh, been more fun to talk about? Yeah, thanks for having me, Oliver. Obviously, Dell had pretty good numbers last evening. Um, clearly, the highlight was the AI server business. You know, it was interesting because um, the, the sales came in much higher than expected. Backlog was roughly flattish Q over Q, um, but uh, the orders continued to improve. I think the bigger thing also, they spoke about the pipeline of AI servers, you know, being multiple of the backlog. Um, I think the positive from there is the fact that, you know, we're still in the early stages of this AI cycle, and there's still opportunity with more enterprise and also sovereign AI purchases. Um, I would say on the pushback side, obviously some of these are lower margin business, and uh, the PC recovery hasn't quite happened. And uh, I think storage just has a huge potential with AI, but that inflection still seems to be out there. Um, we haven't seen that quite happen in storage world yet that you've seen happen in servers and GPU world. Is there more surprise potential in the server build out right now than sort of the initial like chip build out? Have we kind of moved on to the next stage of the operation? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, uh, you know, AI is still in early stages and there's a lot of opportunity for growth. So, you know, in theory, the servers would also move. I don't know if it's going to be a linear progression upwards. It might, might be a little choppy. Uh, it might be in fits and starts. But I think if you take a longer term look, you know, the market should grow from here over the next few years or several years. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be as simple as like linearly, like, you know, uh, a trajectory up to the left. Okay. Uh, Chris, what about the message on uh, personal devices? To come back to HPQ for a sec, Dell to some degree as well, the stuff that's been dragging on their businesses. We saw a message from Best Buy that they saw consumer demand coming back. Is that a, a, a big deal? Does it move the needle at all, that stuff, when we're in this giant uh, AI growth period? Does it matter? I think in the long run, yes. I think, you know, people are talking about AI PCs, AI smartphones, and things like that. Um, clearly, you know, I think uh, we haven't seen AI PCs really, like, come into fruition quite yet. We're still in the very early stages. Uh, you know, depending on who you talk to, like, you know, there are some chips. Um, which are considered AI chips could be in some of the PCs later this year. Um, but I think the real opportunity is starting in 2025 and beyond. Mm, I think the, like, the one thing that always is kind of interesting is that, you know, HP has said this in the past, you know, an AI PC could be a 5 to 10% premium, um, but the silicon content is also growing. So it could probably be like, you know, maybe gross margin percentage wise neutral or no impact, maybe some gross profit dollar upside, but Looks like, you know, it's not just the AFC, but the cost is also going up. But definitely looks like it's a longer term thing. We haven't seen it quite yet. And also people said about the AI uh, smartphones and the Apple release and things like that. Uh, Chris, uh, give me a thought on the potential for big Apple refresh cycle. Are you, are you a believer in the thesis? Yeah, we do have uh, pretty good numbers for next year. You know, I think uh, Apple doesn't just close iPhone units. We have them around, like, you know, around 215 million this year, going up to 240. Next year, 240 is kind of back to the prior peak levels in 2021 or so. Um, so that's a pretty nice growth year over year. Keep in mind, I think there are two things going in your favor. Number one, uh, obviously, is uh, the fact that, you know, for the last couple of years, units have been coming down because if you look at next year, compared to the last big cycle is in 2021, uh, it's a three-year replacement or so, or so. So 2025, units should grow. And then you lay on top of it AI, so you should have a pretty good refresh cycle in 2025 uh, for the iPhones. Okay. So uh, at this point, we should uh, assume that some of this is uh, uh, very real then, or is Apple too expensive based on not knowing for sure yet? No, I mean, I wouldn't say it's expensive. You know? I mean, the valuation is always up for debate with Apple, especially, um, you know, depending on how we look at it. But we do think that it's like, you know, this is upside from the start, so I wouldn't call it necessarily very expensive or any such thing. Um, the other thing is that I think uh, we're still in the very, very early days of, you know, AI smartphones, et cetera, or as some of the people in the industry call it, um, AI on the edge. And I think there's a lot of, op you know, opportunities for Apple to monetize it over the next several years. All right. Chris, thanks for the thoughts.